Hey guys, I know if you're watching this video, you're probably a user of Primavera P6. And what I'm gonna tell you about are some of the new features that were recently released in version 21.12. That's right, I'm gonna cover all the new features. You're gonna find out all the cool little tweaks and things that are different, how to use them and take advantage of them going forward. Ready? Here we go. You can still specify a time for the start and finish date of the activity in the day picker. I'm going to show you what that means. Financial period calendars have only been around for a little while and now they're being incorporated better into the files and the import and export process. Take advantage of that feature. Okay, here's another thing that's really interesting and probably an enhancement we could have seen for a long time. This is from Oracle's cumulative feature overview tool, which I'll show you how you can use that tool to see all of the new features. I'll show that at the end of the video. Here's what's new. I've got a whole bunch of these to go through and I'm gonna go through them one by one. Are you ready? Let's go. And to me, this is a great, great new feature. This one is interesting to me. The ability to run reports and things from the command line in Primavera P6, it's actually been around for a long time. It's kind of hush hush, not too many people know about it. This update is just saying that we've got a small change with regard to how that happens now. It is run from primavera.cache-service.exe with a whole bunch of stuff. It's not a huge update for us, but I do want to tell you that I'm hoping to cover how we can run things from the command line in Primavera P6 in a future video, so stay tuned for that. Okay, assignment cost exports. Primavera has been doing a lot of work on improving what gets exported to XML files, their XML file format. They're trying to make it better than even what XER files can do. And in some ways, there's more data now available in XML files than there were ever in XER files. Here's another thing they've added. Assignment cost exports. When you export to P6 XML file format, price per unit data for assignments is included in the export file. Now this is actually important. I'm gonna show you what I mean by this. So let's flip to P6. What we're looking at is a resource, and on the resource units and prices tab, what we have is a list of um, units, changes in units, or cost of units prices, basically. So you can see that this is old data, but in January 1999, up to January 1st, 1999, we had this rate of, of $85 per hour, and then we changed it to 110. This kind of cost data has never been included in XML files, which means that you may not get the full picture of your costs on the other side. Chances are you'll get a good picture, but now we have more data being exported. Okay, make multiple user accounts ineffective quick and easily. This says EPPM only, so this is something that we can't do in P6. Professional, it's only for EPPM, and sometimes some of those things show up in this list. Okay, here's another one that I think is actually going to be very interesting to us. It says, start and finish times for activities when your view shows only the date. When your view shows only the start and finish dates for activities and not the time, not the clock, you can still specify a time for the start and finish date of the activity in the date picker. I'm gonna show you what that means. And to me, this is a great, great new feature. So I have always been an advocate of turning on the 12 hour clock, which means that wherever you see a date, you'd also see the time next to it. So it would be the 3rd of July or 3rd of June at 10 a.m. or 8 a.m., for example. What this feature is about is that even though I'm not displaying the clock, I can still set the time in the date picker. Previously, the date picker time was grayed out, but now I can still set the time. 
this is a smart feature. So we don't always have to be turning on the 12 hour clock and turning it off. We can still set the time. And this is available in all sorts of different places like constraints. So now I can set the time and constraints, including the data date. I can set the time for my data date. I don't always have to be going into edit user preferences to do that. Take advantage of that feature. Here's another feature. Select the financial period calendar to assign when importing a new project. When you import projects from a P6 XML file, by the way, this also is true for XER files, you can select the financial period calendar to assign. Now, what are financial period calendars? I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that, but this is a new thing that was released in the previous version of P6 that allows us to better take advantage of financial periods. It's a new type of calendar. And now when you import a project, you can also assign the financial period calendar to it. So that means that when I do an import, and we'll just do an XML import here to demo this because it's kind of lined up for us. In this import options, we will now see a new option here, financial period calendar. So that means that I can pick the financial period calendar to assign when I'm importing. So this is a new feature. Financial period calendars have only been around for a little while, and now they're being incorporated better into the files and the import and export process. That's what that's all about. Hey guys, if you're enjoying this update and getting value from me telling you what's new in Primavera P6, then be sure to check out our training courses. We have training courses for the beginner planner to the advanced planner from resource leveling to earned value. Check them out over at planacademy.com slash courses. Okay, a couple other things that are improved. Uh, hey, it says here that the administration guide is improved. Hey, if they improve the documentation, I'm all for it. Maintain relationships with external projects when importing from a P6 XML file. Again, this is an option that wasn't available. Uh, external relationships were never maintained in the XML file. Now they are. So now we have support for that as of version 21.4 or on-premise version 21.12 available to everybody. Export projects in IPM DAR, EPPM only. Again, sometimes we get EPPM only features that show up here. This IPM DAR format is specific to the Department of Defense in the United States. They have a specific format that they want um, files and data coming to them, especially from P6. And now we have a better enhancement um, to support that. Okay, here's another thing that's really interesting and probably an enhancement we could have seen for a long time. Let's talk about resource and roll cost spreads. Consider rate changes over time. Well, what's that all about? Well, there's a new option available to you. We have spreads of data in P6. So when I assign, say, a units to a resource, it gets spread over time. And now we have different ways to spread. I'm not talking about resource curves, but I am talking about the spread of cost. So there's a new option that allows us to spread based on a linear spread, or it can be changed to what they call a unit spread. And that allows cost spreads to account for changes in resource and roll rates. Remember a moment ago I showed you that we can change the hourly rate of a resource. And if we do that in the middle of an activity, the activity will pick up a new rate. So half the activity will be $85 an hour and the other half will be $110 an hour. Now we have a setting that allows that to get spread properly. In fact, that spread where I had hourly rates change midstream in an activity was never handled properly in P6. It would actually average out the cost and spread it equally, but now it will not average out the cost. So I'm going to show you this. I'm going to show you where to find this feature. If we go to admin preferences on the options tab here, down at the bottom, we'll see linear spread or unit spread. 
Now, I don't have enough time in this video to cover this in depth, so look for another video from me where I cover this more and show you examples of what a linear spread is versus a unit spread. Okay, two more options. Choose import options for responsible manager and separate import options for global and EPS activity codes. Hey, this sounds really cool. I could not figure out what this is talking about. I can't find anything in the documentation. I can't find any additional uh, changes. So I'll have to report back on this one in the future. EPPM only. When connected to an EPPM database, you can access and use filtered portfolios configured in P6. So that's new. Now through P6 Professional, we can access these filtered portfolios. Again, better integration between EPPM and P6 Professional. Okay, a few more things to talk about. Import template enhancement. Again, better enhancements for XML only on the EPPM side relating to resource calendars. Again, I don't think it's going to rock our world too much. Resource calendars, when P6 Professional is connected to an EPPM database, you can differentiate between the types of resource calendars you're importing from a P6 XML file. Again, better improving the XML file and handling of these calendars. Okay, here's another one that's really interesting. To aid uh, resource-driven critical path visibility. To aid in the, in the resolution of delayed critical paths, before they become project overruns, P6 can now show, one, activities on up to 30 activity-driven critical paths, calculate on the forward pass, backward pass, blah, 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 and the activities on up to a 30 resource-driven critical paths, calculate on the backwards pass with resource leveling. What? Wow, like that sounds like really interesting. I haven't played with this too much, but I can tell you a little bit about how to access it. In P6, if you right click on any toolbar, you're now going to find a new toolbar called Activity Critical Path. Okay, there it is. It ended up over here on the right side, but we can put this toolbar anywhere we want. And yeah, let's just put it up here. Now there are a series of buttons here that are going to um, do some filtering and show us different critical paths. That's about all I have for you at this point. This is a feature that's gonna take me a little while to dig into and to reverse engineer what it does, how we should be using it, if it's bug free, that kind of stuff. So stay tuned, I'm hoping to cover that in a future video as well. Okay, and this is last but not least, re-enter your unifier integration password. Again, some, something that I don't use Unifier and I don't know too many um, individual users that do, but if you are using Unifier, it seems like there's a better um, encryption method for pass passwords here so that you have a safer connection between P6 and Unifier. Lastly, I wanted to show you how you can access that cumulative feature overview tool. What a complicated name. Okay, so click this link I'm going to put it in the bottom of the video that will take you to Oracle's Primavera P6 library page. And if you go to the 2021 or 2022 documentation library page, just click that link there. You should see right on the first page here, cumulative feature overview, CFO. You could probably Google that as well, CFO um, Oracle. And if you click that, this takes you to their cumulative feature tool where you can pick P6 or EPPM, and you can take your current release, say you're on version 20.12 is what I did, and your target release, which was 21.12, and you can run a report. And this report shows you all the features and the release date. So check that out if you want. There's a link at the bottom of the video. More stuff to come. If you enjoyed the video, leave us a comment below. Let us know what you liked, what you want to hear more of. Make sure you like the video as well. That really helps us out. And if you're interested, check out planacademy.com courses. We have an awesome online self-paced courses on mastering Primavera P6. Also, there's some great videos here that you might want to check out after you finish this one.